Hey, what is up everyone, it's David here. Tauga just completed their institutional placement for $25 million with a share purchase plan just opening up to eligible shareholders to raise another 10 million coming very soon. This capital is going to be used towards creating a pilot plant and that is to demonstrate to their customers that their product can be produced at scale and the quality is just as good as during the qualification phase. And since my last video on Tauga, they have received commitment of 1.8 million Australian dollars from the UK government to do a feasibility study on the commerciality of a Tauga UK anode refinery. On top of that, a Swedish state-owned mining group, LKAB, have also decided to join Mitsui to jointly develop the Vatangi anode project. There are a few more things I'm going to cover and as usual, I'll wrap up the video with a mini portfolio update. Just for transparency's sake, I am long Tauga and I've tried to be as objective as I possibly can be in this video. In saying that, I am not a professional and this video is not financial advice or recommendation for you to do anything. I make these videos because I'm a nerd and I'm proud of it. If you do need help with investing, make sure you go see a licensed professional. So without further ado, let's now firstly, let me quickly recap my investment thesis in Tauga so you can understand where I'm coming from and the risk that I am actively paying attention to. From a top-down perspective, we know that battery economics have improved to the point that in 2022, it's very likely that electric vehicles will have the same cost of ownership compared to an internal combustion engine vehicle. According to Bloomberg New Energy Finance, more than half the cars sold in the future will likely be electric vehicles. Outside of China, Europe is the second fastest growing market in EV adoption in both the near term and the long term. Together with the need to localize battery supply chain to one, make EVs more affordable, and two, to capture more of the value within the region, and three, to minimize the disruption to the battery supply chain in the future, these are all of the different elements of the backdrop when I started learning about batteries. Then the bottom up approach prompt me to look at the different parts of the battery supply chain, zooming in to see if there's any local projects that are able to ride out the tailwind I just described in the backdrop. So long story short, Tauga was one of my candidates with a local project supported by local government and high net worth individuals to ride out the tailwind in EU. I created a video with all of my previous Tauga videos if you want to nerd out about batteries. But like all companies, there are major hurdles to cross before they become a legitimate blue chip on the ASX. There are three biggest risks in Tauga I am constantly paying attention to. Number one, the ability to raise capital continuously. I'll explain that more in just a second. Number two, the ability to scale production to meet the battery manufacturer's demands in both cost and quality. And three, battery technology developments. Now, this is a CapEx heavy industry. It takes years to get your license to operate and then it takes time to go through the qualification process with your prospective customers and then you have to build a pilot plant to prove to those customers that you can produce your product at scale and then finally the mine can fully come online. So Tauga's ability to raise capital is a critical factor on whether Tauga can stay alive long enough to see the hard work come to fruition. And being able to raise capital is one thing, but having the operational excellence to produce the product at scale and still having the same quality is a completely other thing. And finally, there's always that risk of battery technology development that will eliminate the need for anode materials in the future. I'm gonna speak more specifically on that in just a second. With my investment thesis and key risks out of the way, there are a couple announcements I want to go through from the company and I want to talk about how that have shaped or changed how I think about Tauga. The first announcement that caught my attention was LKAB joining the party and confirming their intent to join develop the project with Mitsui and Tauga. Now LKAB is a Swedish state-owned mining company and although this is a non-binding letter of intent, Having a government-backed company with deep expertise is only going to help operationally and Tauga's ability to raise future capital. Then a month later, ABB, which is a Swedish robotics and industrial automation giant, have also joined the party to create Europe's the largest lithium-ion battery anode production facility. 
In my opinion, these two entities joining the party is demonstrating strong public and private interest to see this project through. When it comes to public interest to see this through, it's not just Sweden, but UK government have committed 1.8 million Australian dollars for Tauga to complete a feasibility study into the commerciality of a Tauga UK anode refinery. As it stands, my understanding is that Tauga's product development team is in UK. So this could be part of UK's strategy, trying to capture some of the battery manufacturing value within the country. What I've learned over the past couple of months about localizing battery supply chain is that it's not just about lowering costs of electric vehicles or de-risking the future disruptions to the supply chain, but it's about jobs and GDP growth for both the continent and the country. Nevertheless, the UK government supporting Tauga will only be a supporting point for future rounds of capital raising. Before we get to the capital raising news, the Nishka scoping studies, which is the much bigger, bigger project Tauga owns is now complete. Taking into account the Nishka project, if the numbers are what they say it is, then Tauga will become the largest lithium ion battery anode producer outside of China with greater than 100,000 tons production per year by 2025 to 2026. I won't comment too much on the scoping study beyond that because it's preliminary and it's important for me to stay conservative and cautious instead of trying to be a high beast. Nonetheless, the scoping study is a great learning piece to learn more about mining, the financial and the sensitivities behind mining evaluations. And then finally, the 35 million capital raising announced by Tauga recently. The money itself doesn't excite me. It's the maturity of the company and what they're using that money for that excites me. You could say your product is awesome, how much of it you have, but all of that doesn't mean anything if you can't even get past the customer qualification stage. And the fact that Tauga is raising money to build a pilot plan tells me that customers want to see if they can produce the same product at a relatively bigger scale. That's one step closer to commercial scale at 19,000 tons per year. And in my opinion, that's when a big portion of the initial value in Tauga will be unlocked. Now the capital raising is broken into two parts. 25 million is fully underwritten and is already complete. And another 10 million from share purchase plan for eligible shareholders to participate in. The final thing I want to address in this video is the whole risk when it comes to future battery technology developments that will eclipse the graphite anode materials. With any new battery technologies, it's important to remember that just because it performs well at a lab scale, doesn't mean that it has the same performance, reliability, safety track record, or economic properties like the lithium ion batteries at a much bigger scale. Lithium ion batteries with a graphite anode is proven to work over and over again over decades of utilization. And supply chain, although lagging behind, have largely followed that trend. So in my opinion, the probability of something that will eliminate the need to use anode materials in the future is very, very low. Don't get me wrong, graphite anode is incrementally evolving towards silicon graphite anodes because of power density and resource availability. But the thing that makes me appreciate Tauga the most is that they have a product development team in-house and they are possibly one of the rare few who can produce silicon graphite anode economically. Not to mention a few next-gen anode products. Ultimately, I could be wrong about everything I just talked about. That's why it's important for you to do your own due diligence. But from my own research, I'm grateful that there might just be another Aussie unicorn in the making. With my CMC market portfolio side of things, it's currently worth about 68,500 Australian dollars. And as part of my Tauga position, I'll be adding another $2,500 in as part of the share purchase plan. Now my portfolio is, hasn't been updated only because my shares are still being confirmed. So hopefully in the next couple of portfolio updates, my portfolio value should also be updated as well. Other than that, I haven't made too many changes on the Australian side. I do have a couple of things on the Australian market that I am constantly watching. And if I do decide to do something with it, I'll make sure to keep you posted in my portfolio updates. With my stake portfolio, including my buying power is approximately 30,000 US dollars and that's approximately 41,000 Australian dollars. Now I know that the total returns look really good and everything is green but 
I do want to manage my own expectations in the future that maybe the green days won't always be so green. So I haven't made too many changes here and I'm very, very cautious that the market are overly optimistic on certain things. So that's why I am mostly standing in the sidelines, watching, observing, and if there are right opportunities for me to go hunting, I will. But in the short term, I haven't made too many moves on the US side. Now, as usual, I'm not sponsored by Stake and Dropbox and GoPro are not part of my portfolio. But if you wanna try Stake for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you have learned something new and want to continuously support me making great videos for you or even be part of my fortnightly Q&A, consider supporting this channel via Patreon. Nevertheless, remember to gently smack that like button, subscribe to my channel and click onto the bell so that when I release future videos, you'll be the first one to know. Now, if you're not sick of me yet and are in the mood for a few more videos, I have put something on the screen that I think you'll really enjoy. Until next time, my name is David. Otto will always do the honors and see you very, very soon.